Welcome to Coastal with Catherine. Today's show, we are featuring two very interesting women who are entrepreneurs and have taken their passion for the coastal waters and built it into a business. We'll meet with Amber Kewen. Many of you know her from the Turtle Patrol, but she also owns her own Spartina Education Tours. She gave us interesting information about living along the coast and how it evolved over the past years. Then we'll meet with Nina, who is known as Nina the Mermaid of Hilton Head Island. We'll talk about ocean conservation, dolphins, and even sharks. Let's start with Amber. She took us out on her boat as she educates us about the May River and marine life. And now we're on the floating lab and Amber, this is your office. It is my office, it's not so bad. It does get hot at times. It does get hot. hot. Say. So we're slowly going along so we can talk to you as well. So let's pick up our conversation when I asked you about the coastlines and after the 20 years now being out here, what have you seen? Well, there's definitely more bait traffic because the population of Bluffton, South Carolina anyway, has doubled in the last 10 years. And people get here and of course they're going to want to buy a boat. I mean, look at this. I just told her yeah. I want to buy a boat. Yeah. <laughs> but the boats seem to be bigger than they ever have, shinier, and the drivers seem to be younger. So things you need to know about boating around here on these uh, small waterways is that you throw a wake. You know, yeah. if you if you don't go the right speed, you're throwing a wake and that disturbs the boats that sit at the dock. So there are things that you should probably learn about before you go out and it also causes erosion on the bluff when your wake hits it like that. You don't have to go no wake all the time. You just have to know that that middle speed when you're plowing through the water and you can't see over the bow, that's when you're throwing your wake. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. And that, that's actually that's a very important tip because even people when wave riders and things like that, it does erode the, the shoreline and the docks and all that kind of thing. So but along with mankind coming and intruding on this area, what do you notice with the erosion or the marine life? Are we still strong? Do you find, you know, there's been a decrease or? I feel like there's a decrease in the blue crab population, but you know, with any seafood source, natural resource, the more people you have to feed, the, the more you're gonna take from it. And that's just a product of having people move here, which, you know, is, is expected. I, I think that the Department of Natural Resources is monitoring the health of the populations to make sure that they don't right. suffer a, to extinction, but I mean, can you tell a difference between when I was a child going crabbing and now? Absolutely. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. I used to be able to catch four crabs hanging off of a chicken neck, so now I can't do that. <laughs> Obviously, it takes me forever <laughs> to you find see, crabs. But that's, those are things that we notice. That's interesting. So as we, when you take your, your guests out on your tour, um, it's usually a couple of hours, mm -hmm. and you not only do you talk about things like we're talking about right now, but you also bring on some of the marine life. You have, she has a couple of crabs back there, <laughs> little guys, um, which made me shriek because I wasn't sure what it was, but that's okay. Uh, what else do you talk about on the boat? What's, what's the inquiring well, mind? You know, I get people's comments about how, do you get in this water? They'll say, what? We thought this place was a clean, pristine nursery of the ocean, but we can smell the pollution in that mud over there, and we can't see through this water. It's dirty, you know, how, how does that work? And I have to tell them about the smell, and it, it's kind of a process, but it smells like rotten eggs, it's <laughs> hydrogen sulfide gas. If we do not smell that smell, basically, the mud flat is not decomposing the things that have sunk in. So if we don't smell the smell, it means it's not clean. So it's the opposite of what people think. So then we don't get our oysters, we don't get our mussels, we don't get our... Well, the oysters sit on top of the mud flat. They're not okay. inside, but they filter 50 gallons of water a day each. So they're contributing to it, you know. And As long as the health of the water is good, mm -hmm. then the health of the oysters are good. The problem that we have um, now with development, and this will happen anywhere coastal and development, is that you're changing uh, pervious surfaces to impervious surfaces. So instead right. of sand, you've got a rooftop. Yeah. And you can try to mitigate that in other ways, like putting pavers down instead of concrete for your driveway, or not watering your grass every day. 
um, you know, rain barrels, things like that that you can that help with the rain runoff that's making their, their way over the gas, the fuel, the fertilizers, the fecal coliform into the lowest point now, which is the May River, which used to be the swamp. Right. But what do you do to the swamp when you have to build on top of it? That's right. You drain it, you That's fill right. it with sand. That's right. <laughs> and then the water catchment isn't there. Right. You know, it's really interesting. I mean, that's a very important part of building, and now we're developing. Bluffton has become one of the most populated areas to be building now, mm -hmm. and uh, these are things that they have to look after for sure. Next, Nina will give us a little insight about how she and her husband developed their business before she talks about her love for the marine life. And I'm so excited to introduce you to mermaid Nina, and she is the, the mermaid of Hilton Head Island. I am finally delighted to meet you because I have been watching your videos and you know I can see the kids. You're having a great time here. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> and that's why I finally caught up with you because when I talk about my show, The Hidden Gems, I think when you are coming to this low country, Hilton Head, this is definitely something I, I would want you to experience. But let's talk about you because you and your husband, Ricky, have started this business. So let's talk about Mermaid of Hilton Head Island. Let's start there. Okay. Uh, so we moved down to the island six years ago and after w we spent a lot of time like exploring you know like like you do when you're new here and we learned that there is a lot of wildlife here that needs protected and a lot of the reason that it needs protected is lack of education because people just don't know like the sand dollars people take sand dollars because they don't know that they're alive um, so it was something that we saw a need for and that's how the business basically got started was because we wanted to reach more people and try to educate people about the wildlife to try to discontinue some of these bad habits. <laughs> so ocean conservation, you like that very much. I mean, you are spending a lot of time in the water. So in the global of your business, number one, you have Be a Mermaid, right? And yes. So that is one thing. Tell us about that. Uh, it's, it's a lot of diving. It's a lot of in the water. Um, it's a lot of fun because you get to see all the wildlife you, there are a lot of things that I didn't even know we had here uh, that just kind of pop up and every time you see something new you're like oh that's a that's a fun surprise you know such as what um, <laughs> uh, we have let, let me think we have brittle sea stars here which I didn't know we had we have uh, flatworms which are really cool they're really pretty they like glide all along the ocean floor they're really awesome uh, we have box jellies which a lot of people don't know uh, that's kind of a scary surprise I think um, but there are a lot of like little things, like we have salps, which are awesome. Uh, we have a lot of little different things that a lot of people don't know about because they're not out here all the time seeing them, and it's just really cool to see them up close. I also want to point out, um, we would turn around, you can see this is high tide. If you look at the number 13 pole, you can see the water line, it's going up. And, it, and our tide here is tidal about 8 feet. So. Tell me, eight, what, four more feet lower would be low tide? That's, what, that's about right. We got an eight and a half feet, so we're mid tide right now. And we won't see the mud flats for a little while. The tide is going out right now, so it'll be another four hours ish. Ish. <laughs> and this is the question navigating the waters, are they tricky waters? Can you, can oh, you yeah. get stuck easily? I think you can. I have hit every sandbar <laughs> there is to hit out here because I got the keys to the family motorboat when I was 12. This is the worst parenting skill you could possibly imagine, <laughs> but you know, by trial and error, I I didn't have a dub sounder or a GPS map or anything like that. We just kind of had to learn by knowing what would happen if we went there. That's right. So we right. tried it all. So okay. now I know where they are. <laughs> and even though I have one now, I don't use it. Yeah. Well, I think you know everything about the water, so we need to know. So let's, let's talk about the sea turtles because this is very passion of Amber's. Uh, when I first met you, I found you through that. Mm -hmm. um, the sea turtles have become a very important part of the Hilton Head Island uh, marine life. They are revered, protected, and I'd like you to share with us about them because uh, the population is growing again for while they were flat or even declining, and we need to do a few things to help them on the beach. So tell us about the process. They actually crawl up on the beach, and you can see those, if you see their tracks, they actually look like a, like a tire track. Yeah, so I started on Hilton Head in 1998, and we were excited if we broke 100 nests. And now our average is around 300. So that didn't start to escalate until 2010. So the programs to protect the sea turtle nests on Hilton Head and in South Carolina started in the 80s. And sea turtle, at least the loggerhead and the green, have to be around 30 years old to reproduce. 
So if you take those early years, add 30. Right. 2010 was about the time when things, those hatchlings that would have left the area are coming back to nest. So that's where you see the recovery. And that's why it's so hard to get them to recover because they're so long lived and it takes forever for them to reproduce. You know, and then the journey of, I mean, I did a little homework and I've, I've heard your story tell before, but after a little guy is hatched, he's got to make his way to the ocean. That's part one. And then he has to go swim to the Gulf of Mexico before he gets eaten. Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream. I thought it was mm -hmm. Gulf. Okay, Gulf Stream. And then he has to grow a little bit and then he will come back when? When does he come? Well, they leave our coast and, and the Gulf Stream is 70 miles away from our coast. So it's a three day swim for a hatchling this big. So the statistic is one in a hundred will actually make it there. Then once they're in the Gulf Stream, they can rest, they can hide in the sargassum weed, right. they can feed in there, and then it will maybe take a year at the most, unless they get lost, <laughs> to get across the Atlantic Ocean and get to the Azores, which is an isolated island chain off the coast of Portugal. And once they're there, they'll hang out in that area for about 15 years before they decide to hop back on the gyre, come across the Atlantic Ocean, back to the eastern seaboard. So we don't see loggerheads here between the ages of maybe you know hatchling and 15. Uh, that's that's yeah. really interesting i mean so don't we have myrtle or mabel it's myrtle, myrtle is a turtle that we have tagged by dna because we do that with every nest and she is a mom in other words she's got daughters who are nesting so if she's got daughters who are at least 30 years old then she's at least 60 years old and she's very uh, much an overachiever. She comes every other year instead of skipping two years and she lays up to 150 eggs in a clutch which is huge and she puts down eight and the average is two to four so she's definitely she's a, she's a, a superstar. She's a super mom. <laughs> yeah she's a, that's what they call her a super mom. Ah, very and then we have two grandmothers in the state that nest and that means they have to at least be 90. Have we seen Myrtle yet? Myrtle has not come back yet. No we um made a big deal out of her and then she didn't come back <laughs> so i'm a little worried but sometimes they do that if they get an injury from let's say a shark or a boat or something like that and they have to recover before they can come back so it'll it'll be something like that but i'm hoping that she will be back so i just want to also point out that this is actually a, a foundation and they're always looking for support sea turtle patrol hilton head island is a 501c3 yeah yeah and that's how we operate. Nobody gets paid. Nobody gets paid. Unfortunately. But they're up at five o'clock in the morning going oh, yeah. to the beaches with headlamps on and and, so, oh, yeah. and sometimes it's really cold in the morning too. You have to have passion for it to yeah. still do it. You yeah. know, to go through all of that. And all the girls and we've got two gentlemen, three gentlemen on our staff, they they will um, always be doing it as long as they can because they're just as, as much into it as I am. They would at once only one time when I was walking the beach, probably around seven o'clock in the morning for the sunrise. I saw a little guy, and oh my gosh, he kept going the wrong way. I know you're not allowed to touch him, you know, and he just like, I yeah, wanted to say, turn around, turn around, turn around, and eventually he did, but it took him about 10 minutes to turn around, and I really felt bad that uh, he got there. And then I thought, oh my gosh, he's going to go to the golf stream, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's very endearing, and it's, it's part of the charm of Hilton Head and Bluffton, and the low country, mm -hmm. and we have that on our coastal town. You're in the water, and you are, your guests come up in a boat and they have an encounter with you. Yes. So share us, tell us about that. Okay, so they, they go out on the boat looking for a mermaid and they find dolphins along the way, uh, but ultimately, of course, they always find the mermaid. And once I swim up to the boat and I'll, I'll quiz them, it's like a mermaid pop quiz to see how smart they are and if they can uh, pass the quiz, they become ocean ambassadors, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and then once the quiz is over, then it's their time to ask me questions uh, and I get a lot of a lot of fun questions uh, such as sometimes I get math questions do you really <laughs> on Saturday I got asked if mermaids have a democracy like by an eight-year-old <laughs> uh, that's, so a, that's a pirate thing pirates have democracy <laughs> that's funny though. it's yeah I get a lot of very interesting ones and it's interesting to see how smart they are and what they know too um, but then once the questions are uh, once the questions are in progress then the villain will come over and the villain tries to capture the mermaid and they have to fight off the villain. Um, and then once the villain leaves, we continue with questions and then at the end, they all earn their ocean ambassador badges and 
they are very proud to have their badges. It's super that is cute. adorable. <laughs> I love this story. I want to go. I want to play. <laughs> so uh, as an encounter, as you're in the water all the time, let's talk about our marine life. I'm a big fan of like you're talking about um, doing better things for our waters. Mm -hmm. You know, we only have so much, and our coasts are changing. Um, we, we come across stingrays, mm -hmm. dolphins. I mean, do you have anybody bumping into you while you're in the water? Uh, not really bumping into me. They're pretty, they're pretty aware of what's happening under there. Um, I did have an incident with a manatee a few years ago because I guess they're not quite as aware as everybody else. But uh, <laughs> as far as bumping into me, we don't have any physical contact. But um, I do see, I do see a lot of really cool things up close. Like we, I see dolphins all the time. Uh, about a month ago, I had an alligator in my cove, um, and then people ask me all the time if I see sharks. And it is connected to the ocean, and it's salt water, and they live there. So yes, I see sharks. But I would have to say, if I had to pick the friendliest, the friendliest animals I've met out there, it would have to be sharks. Uh, they're friendlier than dolphins. Dolphins have a weird reputation for being friendly when they can actually be pretty moody and aggressive. Uh, the sharks are always very sweet. So it's would they just come up and say hi? I have I have one shark. Her name is Ethel. And she's about <laughs> she's about a five foot black tip shark, and she'll at low tide, she'll come up to me and she'll follow me around, and it's really cool for the guests on the boat because they see like there's a shark behind me, uh, so so that's a pretty cool. I think I that's a cool thing. I'm just sitting here going, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's very sweet. She's like a puppy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so you guys, do you get to see each other a couple times a week? Uh, well, when it's low tide, like every day, I see her like every day. And I'm almost positive, I mean, there's, uh, sharks are difficult to tell who's who. I'm almost positive it's the same one, because it's the same size and she's a black tip shark. So I'm almost positive, but it's difficult with sharks. Oh, that's adorable, but I love your passion. So <laughs> let's, keep, let's keep walking, we'll talk some more. Okay. So what else could you leave us with today as we sort of close our conversation? Well, you know, I think if you're gonna move here, and, and most people on my boat have been here for less than five years. If you're going to move here, it's important to understand where you are and how it all works. If you're going to learn to drive a boat, don't just get the key and go. Right. <laughs> Find a local. If a local is screaming at you from their dock, it's probably because of your wake. And, you know, you just need to learn what that speed is, how far away from the docks that is. You know, it affects the bluff, erosion. It affects the oysters. The constant pounding of those waves will mm -hmm. affect them. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, to know what the issues are that we are having in the low country with freshwater runoff. So not only when that water makes it to this river, which is not a river, by the way, a river is fresh water flowing one direction downhill. Here we have pure salt water flowing in two directions. We call it a river because it's easier than saying the May path of least resistance for the ocean pushing water into the land. Oh my God, that's, almost a, that's like super califragic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But when you're adding fresh water to a marine environment, you're diluting the salinity. And if that happens too much, the larval organisms die and then you don't have crabs and shrimp and fish. So, you know, we've got to watch that fresh water, what it brings with it. It's in the oysters. If mm -hmm. it's in the water, that can make us sick. Mm -hmm. um, just got to pay attention to where you are in the area and, you know, just, just knowing what the issue is, is, is half the battle. Right. Well, Amber, I'm so grateful for your time today. It's just really a beautiful day and it's lovely to be out in the water. And I want to make sure we tell everybody, come take a tour. She does this green education uh, on the lap boat and also you do a sunset tour. For, like, and then what's nice about this boat, it's small and it's intimate. It's not small, but it's, 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 it's spacious, it's, but yet it's... Spacious. But it's not um, huge. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So you're not like you're not on a big barge. No, it's not a head boat. Twenty yeah. passengers, and you know I'll do whatever it takes to keep uh, the mortgage paid so that I can go volunteer on the beach all day. <laughs> well, there you have it. That's yeah. exactly what we want to do for her. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Amber. And uh, look at this. Look at the Spartina. How beautiful it is. And now I just wish we could have a dolphin. Or you said you saw a turtle. I saw a dolphin earlier, a baby dolphin, and the babies are born in the spring, so I was happy to see that little guy. Yeah, it's beautiful. And now we're making our way back into the dock in O-Town Bluffton.
Well, Amber, thank you so much for this tour. It was so much fun. I've learned a lot okay. as well. And, and I know we only touched a little bit of it, oh, though. Yeah. There's so much to be. There's a lot. So as, a, as our viewers are watching us, I would like to ask them one question is mm -hmm. what, so for contact, we'll, we'll give you her website information, call, all the information you need for scheduling tours, everything like that. Right. You can go to uh, SpartinaCharters.com or you can find the phone number and just call me directly. It's just me in a boat, so <laughs> you're going to get me every time. She's the lifeline. That's right. And I want to highly recommend, you know, again, and I talked about this earlier with my show, is that, you know, with COVID, it really has sort of sucked us dry a little bit in, in our coastal community. So mm -hmm. I would love to sort of spark again and, and, and introduce our businesses that are here that you traditionally may not know right off the bat. So, you know to thrive and get our community back on track. People are ready to get out and do stuff, so. Eggs, and what's that better than being on the water, right here? That's right. So along with the mermaid encounter in the water, we also have mermaid photography. So tell us about that. I think you have quite a team. Yeah, so we have, we have an amazing team, um, and the mermaid photography is a big part of what we do as well. So it's, we have people come onto the beach and turn into mermaids on the beach. Uh, and it's it's a lot of fun for them. It's fun for us too because we get to see how excited they get to turn into mermaids, and then we do a photography session with them in the tail. Um, so it's that's a lot of fun too. That is a lot of fun. I saw I was on your website, and you can see you know the kids, the families, the sisters and brothers. You turn the boys into sharks. Is that yeah, what they were? We yeah, we do. Sharks. <laughs> and, you know, it's very sweet, and that's a great idea. So you've been doing this as long. How long has that been going on? Five five years. Five yeah. years. So you you and your husband had this global thought about education in the water yes. and also including a fun photo. That's wonderful. <laughs> now are you all year long with the photography? So we are. We offer it year round. However, it does get cold in the winter. Oh. So we book less just because it's uncomfortable. Yeah. However, this year we're actually working, we're currently working on a project. We're opening an indoor studio and it's a beach. So we have sand, we have, we're building dunes right now. Um, so it can be indoor year round. We don't have the wind to contest with. We don't have the, the muggy temperatures. Some kids are afraid of the water, like they don't like the water touching them. So I think that will really expand the photography end of what we're doing. My goodness, and then what else? We have mermaids, the photography, and then you have a dolphin cruise? We have, yeah, we have dolphin and sunset tours as well. You guys are busy. We, yeah, we are. <laughs> So what else can I share with my viewers? I mean, I just love your enthusiasm. I love the fact that you're, you're protecting the ocean. You're educating about the waterways. And that's the one thing I love about Coastal with Catherine is that our waterways. Yeah. And I love talking about the history. What else can you share with us? What else, what's unique that you have found in the last five years being here that, hmm, I'm surprised? I think for me, it's I'm impressed with how much the locals care about the wildlife. Um, when we first moved here, we had a summer here and we saw a lot of tourists who needed the education but they also you know they're on vacation so they don't care as much but it's nice when I get locals on the boat they already know they know about sand dollars they know about sea turtles and they're excited uh, to learn how to educate other people in a way that's friendly and not so confrontational um, and I think that's really refreshing to see that here. I agree with you I do think Hilton Head um and our population and our residents are vigilant about keeping it healthy, safe environment for everybody. I also want you to tell me about the shark tooth experience because, I mean, I understand these guys, the big sharks came along for many years here and there's just, it's a treasure though. So how do you go about finding them? So, well, the shark tooth experience is a barrel um, that we have here and the kids get a little bucket of sand and they get to pan for the shark teeth. So it's already, I mean, we've already found the shark teeth for them, but it's, oh, it's an experience for them. Okay. Uh, a lot of them get really into it. They get super, they'll do it before the tour. They'll come out and they'll, they'll show me their shark teeth. They get really excited to show me. Uh, but it also inspires passion about sharks uh, because, you know, they have their teeth now and it's just, they ask more questions about them, you know, and they, they're more excited to learn about them. So it's kind of, it's an inspirational experience for them. That is great. I understand there are some beaches locally that do have them that naturally come up on the shore. I think it's Edisto Beach. I don't know about Hilton Head, Hilton Head Island. Uh, Hilton Head does, but not as often as Edisto and Tybee is another one that has a lot. Tybee, you guys. Yeah. I know. I don't know. That's interesting. All right. So listen, <laughs> I also love to hear you had written children's books. Yes. And I have also. I'm very passionate about that. I, we were just talking about mine was about what's under the, well, what's under the sea and yours is about 
Uh, I have several. So the first one is about, it's Sammy the Sand Dollar, which is about sand dollars and why we shouldn't take them. They all have an educational message behind them. Uh, the second one is Mermaid of Hilton Head, which is about turning lights off for the sea turtles. The third one is The Mermaid's Friends, which is about the tour. It's based on the tour. Uh, so it's the whole story behind the tour, the characters that are on the tour. Like it kind of brings everything together in story form. Uh, and then the other one I have is The Christmas Coral, which is about reef-friendly sunscreen uh, and how regular sunscreen damages our coral. Okay, well, I love that. I mean, you really are, you know, hitting all the, the areas that are important for our sea life and ecosystem, right? <laughs> I'm trying. You're yes. trying. <laughs> what, are you have any more in the... In the uh, right future? now, we're actually working on converting them over to hardcover because they were published softcover originally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've had a lot of requests for hardcover, so we're in the process of changing them over to hardcover. And I'm also, we're, this past winter, we focused on bringing them to life through animation. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sammy the Sand Dollar is actually animated and on the tour, uh, which is pretty exciting because it also emphasizes the fact that sand dollars are alive uh, because you're talking to one. So it's pretty cool. I love that idea. I think, you know, you've given me great inspiration and I love your enthusiasm. I think it's wonderful. I would like to come hang out at one of your tours with you for sure because... Oh, absolutely. Just, but I've never realized that we had so many sand dollars. I don't see them that often on the beach. Well, on that's occasion, the problem. Oh, <laughs> because they're not around and right, people are yeah. taking them. Yeah, oh. there should be many more. And I want to wish your husband and you lots of luck and a great future here. I think this place is perfect for you. Oh, thank you so much. I so enjoyed meeting both Amber and Nina. They are truly passionate about their businesses and want to provide a quality experience for locals and visitors at Hilton Head Island and the Low Country. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our episodes. And always, thanks for joining us. This is Coastal with Catherine. We'll see you next time.